Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to build an emulation of the SuperSaw oscillator that first appeared on the Roland JP8000. This build will be based on the research performed by Adam Sabo in 2010 and later by Alex Shore in 2013. I will only give a brief background on the history of the SuperSaw since both Sabo and Shore provide excellent treatments of the topic in their respective papers. The Roland Corporation originally developed the SuperSaw oscillator for the JP8000 analog modeling synthesizer. The unit was released in 1997 and became a hallmark of trance music thereafter. The SuperSaw is also featured on the JP8080, which was released in 1998, the V-Synth, which was released in 2003, the SH201, which was released in 2006, and the more recent Gaia SH01. The SuperSaw oscillator present in Roland synthesizers is characterized by seven layered sawtooth oscillators, where six of those oscillators have their frequencies offset or detuned from the frequency of the central oscillator by some fixed amount. The quality of the sound is further influenced by a mix control that allows the user to control the volume of the detunable oscillators relative to the central oscillator. Another important factor of the SuperSaw's characteristic profile is the phase. The phase of an oscillator denotes the offset of the displacement in the cycle of the oscillator at a given point in time. This aspect is only apparent when multiple waveforms interact and their summation results in a compound waveform that may have very different behavior from the constituent waves. The SuperSaw features free running oscillators where the oscillators do not have a static phase. This means that each oscillator potentially has a unique phase and this can create flanging effects on the overall sound quality. Before we start work on the oscillator itself, we need to prepare our project workspace, which we covered in a previous video. I'll be using C++ for the source code on this build. I've put links in the article for guides. I have created a folder for custom projects with an OSC subfolder at the address on screen in my log SDK installation. This is where I'll place the SuperSaw project. If we want this oscillator to model the Roland SuperSaw, then there are some key features we need to include. Seven sawtooth waveforms, detune control, mix control, and random phase assignment. I'd also like to add some additional and optional features, which will bring more depth to the sound and give this emulation some nice variation. Ring modulation and sub and super octave waves. We will have to take a look at the works of Sabo and Shore to figure out what kind of behavior we need to model for the detune and mix controls, as well as issues with the shape. The ring modulation and sub super waves will be based on the example provided in the waves demo in the SDK. The behavior of the ring modulation and sub super waves features will be that these elements can be mixed into the super saw such that they can range from completely absent to completely dominant. Adding the oscillators is relatively straightforward. However, we need to consider the aliasing effect of sawtooth waveforms. Sabo remarks that this has a positive effect on the overall sound since the harmonics above the Nyquist frequency, i.e. half the sampling frequency, add depth and fullness to the sound. However, below the fundamental harmonic, this aliasing sounds unpleasant. Sabo recommends using a pitch-tracked high-pass filter to remove the unwanted artifacts. 
Shore, on the other hand, argues that using band-limited waveforms, which limit the frequency contents of a wave to less than half the sample rate, could be the method Roland used to produce the waveform. He also adds that a high-pass filter may then be applied to the waveform to roll off low-end aliases. To keep things reasonably simple, we will opt for using band-limited waveforms and forgo the application of high-pass filters altogether. Our emulation will demonstrate that this produces an acceptable imitation of the Roland Supersol. We will implement phase randomization by not resetting the phases of the oscillators for note on, note off events and providing the user a control to add a phase drift to the secondary oscillators, including the sub and super octave waves. It should be noted that this means we won't need to use the OSC underscore note on and OSC underscore note off functions. The supersaw creates its distinctive sound by surrounding a central oscillator with an ensemble of oscillators that are offset from the fundamental frequency, nu, of the central oscillator by some ratio. These side oscillators are paired such that for each pair one will be offset below nu and the other above nu by the same amount. This offset can be manipulated by the detune control to create the characteristic sound of the supersaw ranging from string-like pads to harsh choppy leads. When the detune control is at zero, all oscillators will share the same nu, and as the detune control increases, the frequency offset between the oscillators will also increase. In section 3.1 of Sabo's work, he shows the relationship between nu of the central oscillator and the frequencies of its ensemble. He demonstrates that if for any nu of the central oscillator we take the ratios of each oscillator with the central oscillator, where the ratio of the central oscillator with itself is 1, then the frequencies of each side oscillator can be determined by multiplying the detune control value by some offset value and adding or subtracting this from 1. The resulting value is then multiplied by nu to give the frequency nu sub s of each side oscillator. If we let f of x represent the applied detune amount, where x equals the detune control value, then this relationship can be described as f of x equals 1 plus or minus the offset times x. The frequency of the side oscillator, nu sub s, is then nu sub s equals nu times f of x. Sabo then shows that the linear detune control value is manipulated into a curve before being applied to the offset. He demonstrates that this can be approximated by an 11th degree polynomial which reproduces the precise control and fine tuning of the side oscillator frequencies. This function takes the linear input value in the range 0 to 1 and generates values in the same range according to the equation on the screen, where g of x is the calculated detune amount. With this new information, we can redefine the formula for the detune amount as f of x equals 1 plus or minus the offset times g of x. Following on from Sabo's work, Shore then showed that the offset amounts could be approximated by some nice fractions. Assuming here that oscillator 4 is the central member, those values are oscillators 3 and 5, a equals 1 third, oscillators 2 and 6, b equals 2 thirds, Oscillators 1 and 7, C equals 1. The frequencies of the side oscillators can then be defined by the equations on screen. The mix control allows users to adjust the volume of the detunable oscillators relative to the central oscillator. Both Sabo and Shore showed that the mix control lowered the central oscillator volume when increasing the side oscillators to keep the overall volume from clipping. Shore and Sabo have different approaches for dealing with the mix control, and after experimentation with both on the NTS-1, I believe Sabo's approach is more authentic. Sabo determined functions for adjusting the central and side oscillators using the mix control input value. He describes a linear function to adjust the central oscillator and a quadratic function that adjusts the side oscillators. Let z equal the mix control value, and h of z and m of z be the mix control values for the central and side oscillators respectively, then the equations on screen model the mix controls for the oscillators. Now that we understand the behavior of the main supersaw components, we can start to build our program. 
The structure of the source code is based on the waves example provided in the SDK. We're going to need a class to deal with the oscillator parameters and states, as well as functions to handle parameter and state updates. To do this, we'll start by implementing a header file. The first step is to create a project name.hpp file in the project directory. I'm calling my project Ubersaw. Within the outer structure, we have an enum for flags, two inner classes to handle parameters and states, and functions to handle updates to pitch and detune values. We'll be defining some constants at the top of the file to improve code comprehension and customization. We need to define the following parameters to use in the program. Submix for mix control for the sub-octave oscillator. Supermix for mix control for the super-octave oscillator. Ring mix, which is mix control for the ring modulation. Detune, which is the applied detune amount. Detune underscore value, which is the detune control value. Shape, which is the mix control for the super saw and shift shape, which is the phase drift control. We need to define the following states to use in the program. Phi, which is an array to hold the super soft phases of size num osc. Phi super, which is the super octave oscillator phase. Phi sub, which is the sub octave oscillator phase. Omega naught, which is an array to hold the super soft pitches of size num osc. Omega naught super, which is the super octave oscillator pitch. Omega naught sub, which is the sub octave oscillator pitch. LFO, which is the initial LFO value, which is per cycle. LFOZ, which is the final LFO value per cycle. And flags, which is a bit field for control flags.
need some means of controlling detuned function entry since it's computationally expensive. We can set some constant flags using enum and set their values in increasing powers of 2 using the left bit shift. We can then set a flag using a bitwise or and check if a flag is set using a bitwise and. The update detune function implements Sabo's polynomial function, equation 3 in the article, in order to determine an appropriate detune amount from the linear detune control value supplied by the user. While the code may look cumbersome, in terms of performance it is superior in this context than the standard POW function, or the fast pow 2 f and faster pow 2 f functions provided in float underscore mat.h of the SDK, which are unreliable numerically and lead to clipping. To illustrate these issues, I ran a simple program to test these functions in SIGWIN and the results are listed in the main article. The values produced by FastPowF and FasterPowF are inconsistent with the expected values. The POW function is consistent with the detune curve. However, its implementation in the program causes clipping and other audio problems. Consequently, I created a function to handle the polynomials calculation without any noticeable performance impact. This function simply implements a single for loop to perform powers of calculations on 10 variables simultaneously, and calculation errors are prevented using selection statements. The products of the step are then scaled by values determined by SABO and added together. In order to ensure the final value is within the range 0 to 1, we pass the value through the clip01f function, which clips the value to within this range. The update pitch function takes the phase increment for the current note being played and uses it to create the six detuned oscillators surrounding the central oscillator by applying the detune amount to Shor's approximations for the oscillator offsets. We can also add a slight phase drift to the side oscillators using the shapeshift parameter and the side drift constant. Additionally, we set the pitch of the sub and super octave oscillators and apply a phase drift using the sub drift constant.
are now finished with the header file and can move on to the main file, a template of which is provided in the article. Since we have defined a separate class for our SuperSol and handled our initializations there, we need only declare a static instance of the structure within the main file. We must include references to both the user OSC and SuperSol headers. Since we have handled our initializations in the header file, we need only pass the default arguments and void parameters to the OSC int function. The oscillator cycle function is where we compute the waveform. We first create local copies of the state and params objects and then grab the current note being played from the NTS1. Since we are using band limited waveforms, we need to get the wave index for each note, which we acquire with the function osc underscore bl underscore saw underscore index and the parameter taken is a note. We then need to check if the detune value has been changed. The flags we defined will provide this check and prevent us from unnecessarily calling the detune update. Next, we update the pitches and acquire the current LFO value. We will need local copies of the state and parameter fields and an update to the final LFO value before we start to generate the waveforms and add sample frames to the buffer. Within the buffer loop, we calculate a wave mix value which will be used to generate the primary and secondary mix control values for the central and side oscillators. We then compute the central and side oscillator wave samples and apply the mix control values. We need to correct the amplitude of the side oscillators by a fractional value to prevent clipping. Following this, we compute the sub and super octave waveforms and apply their respective mix values. The ring mix value is then applied to the main signal using both the sub and super octave waves.
gross waveform is now ready. We need to pass the signal through a soft clipping function and convert the result to Q31 binary fixed point representation before we send the sample to the buffer. The buffer loop then updates the local phase and LFO values and continues until the buffer is full, after which the global phase and LFO values are updated. The OSC parameter function is where we take user input from the device and pass those values to program variables. We have defined four user parameters and are using the shape and shift shape parameters provided from the standard A and B knob controls. We first create local copies of the state and params objects. We need to pass parameter values to params and flag values to state. The value argument is an unsigned 16-bit integer, so we need to convert this to a float for some parameters. For the mix controls, we want the values to be in the range 0 to 1. To do this, we again use the clip01f function and scale the input appropriately. Now our program is ready, we need to update the manifest and check project.mk and the makefile to make sure everything is in order. We can now open EMSYS, navigate to our project directory and build our custom SuperSaw.
last thing to do is load the unit file to the NTS1. We will demonstrate our SuperSaw emulation in a separate video. Thank you.